How you doing, Cody? Doing great. Are you coming to me live from an elevator? Uh, it kind of looks that way. I'm actually just <laughs> I'm actually just in a random condo. Um, uh, I think this is like the billiard room. <laughs> I bring I bring all of my recording equipment with me every single day. Doesn't matter where I am across the city, I can talk to everyone, including yourself. Boom. I love that. Appreciate <laughs> that and respect it. <laughs> I heard you talking about Mystery Alaska. I love that movie. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know you were on at that point. It's a, it's a hockey film, a wild comedic hockey film that I, yeah, I, yeah. I love. And yeah, <laughs> Cody, uh, thank you so much for joining me today uh, to discuss your movie, Hey Victor. Hey Victor is a mockumentary. It's a fictional version of yourself and the cast and, and crew from the 1998 uh, film Smoke Signal. And uh, I had an opportunity to watch this movie and I had an absolute blast with it. I had so much fun. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So how did you come up with the original concept for this film? That's a mockumentary of the original film. It, <laughs> it, it plays off of the original film, but it's its own kind of storyline. Obviously, the characters are embellished and you're kind of creating uh, a, a, a movie uh, it's like three movies within each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit of how you came up with the yeah. original concept and how it evolved? So the original seeds were planted for this about 15 years back uh, amongst some friends. Uh, I was living in a big house in Boise, Idaho with some fellow filmmakers, Ron Torres and Black Horse Low and a few others. And it was just a running joke of... Uh, because throughout my whole life, from from when I did Smoke Signals up until now, I, I go to, uh, you know, a tribal night market or a ceremony or a powwow or the casino, and Indigenous people will see me and go, oh, you're Victor. Oh, hey, Victor. Oh, hey, Victor. And, and we would make jokes about me pretending like I'm this pompous, arrogant, you know, uh, child star who thinks he's, you know, the, King Cheese. And like, just as rude to people and thinks he can get what he wants and all this stuff. And it's just obnoxious. And we, that was just a joke amongst us. So that's where it was started. And then we had the, I had the idea to make a short film. I said, let's do this as a short film. Cause there was a pitch at a certain film festival. I said, it could be me and Simon Baker. I'll write like a short little buddy thing, like maybe a 12 pager and we'll do something for like two weeks and have fun. Like trying to make smoke signals part two to sort of thing. And just like a okay. wild rambunctious idea. And we didn't get that. We didn't win that pitch. But a lot of people in that pitch meeting said, this is hilarious. This is so unique. And it's so for you. You should make this into a feature or a series. We were like, whoa. So we went back to the to the drawing board. I got in touch with my co-writer, Sam Miller. And he loved the idea. And so we pumped out the script. We pitched it around. We got our funding. And we made it. And it just go. It's just the the movie within the movie. Um, it all plays on real life, but it's fictional, yes. But there are some truths sprinkled in there. Um, you know, we had to watch our backs legally. We had to make sure, you know, uh, get the band back together. Who wants to work with me? Who doesn't? You know, there's a lot of that stuff that comes into play. So some people have asked, like well, what's real and what's not real with your film? It's like, I, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's where a lot of the comedy of it comes from. I love how Victor is unapologetic. Was that you, you mentioned that your friends, you, you created this pompous, arrogant character. At what, what point in the creation of that character did you realize that you needed to go all in? From the get-go. Oh, from the get-go. It wasn't like, oh, should I do this? Should I not? I said, I want to put everything out there. And a lot of that, too, is because I haven't had any comedic roles up until I made this film. Uh, I have another part in the Marvel series Echo where it's comedy. But I actually made Hey, Victor before I did that show. But that came out before Hey, Victor. So... But until Hey Victor, I wasn't being put out for comedic roles. So I wanted to go above and beyond. And I was like, we're going to have to create this ourselves. So let's just put everything out there. And there was actually some people that I gave the script to that I knew for, I have known for years that said they read it. And I said, let me know what you think. And then I get a call back and they're like, are you really going to put yourself out there like this? I said, yeah. And they said, what do people think this is real? I was like, I don't care. I want to go all out for this. I don't have a filter with this type of stuff. 
So, and I want people to know that. And to we indigenous people, we have a really wild, crazy sense of humor. I want to showcase that. So there was no, at no point was I like, oh, is this too far? Not too far. Like we have a, a, a quick joke in there about residential school. And it's like, that could, that could hit or it could fail. Everyone loved it. There was one, one screening, we showed it. And then there's the residential school joke. And uh, this woman stood up and she goes, yeah, I just have one, uh, one thing to say about that residential school joke. And I was like, ah, damn, here we go. Here we go. She's going to, I'm going to get it. She's going to be mad or something. She goes, that was so funny. Oh my God. I was like, oh yeah. See, like, you know, and some, some jokes like anything will hit and some won't and that's fine. Um, there's different, you know, points of like high laughter, low laughter, and then everywhere in between. And I'm just glad that we've had such a great response and, reviews on it and and everyone that's watched it that i know of loves it or we haven't had any negative you know feedback at all so i'm the train's going i want a lot everyone to see this to see the not just myself but the other actors involved too hannah cheeseman and simon baker and the other characters involved like you know it's we're gonna we're really showcasing a different part of what's been uh kept quiet for a long time so yeah Let's Russell. I'm, I'm totally down to Russell some feathers. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like taking on um, at, uh, so many roles in this film from acting, directing and writing? How did you balance everything? So that that in itself is a part of the film itself, right? Just the yeah. written, directed, star. Just like that's why when when we wrote this, when I wrote this with Sam Miller, um, I was like, okay, sweet. We got this written. Um, so I wrote and I'll act, I act in it. Oh, I have like three people off the top of my head that could direct. Who do we think should direct? And and my producers are all sitting around. They're staring at me. And I'm like, why are you guys all staring at me? Like for directing, you want me? To, I'm going to direct this. Oh my God. And they're like, yeah, it only fits. It suits the movie written, directed, starring just like me, me, me. But in real life, I am not me, me, me. So that's why we uh, they, we thought it would be fitting for me to have those titles for this film. Um, with with directing, though, I had an amazing first uh, first assistant director, Carly McTavish, and I had Sam Miller there, my executive producer, behind the camera, making sure that for all the technical stuff. And I was working with actors in scene because we had to get through several pages per day. We shot everything in 21 days. So I was working with actors in scene, making sure there was a good flow. And if I felt comfortable with every our performances, I'm like, Kate, let's move on. No. Oh, there was an issue with this. Kate, let's do it one more time. So we worked as a team. So I am listed as director, but it was definitely 100% a team effort. And it was a great learning experience. And so, but yeah, it, um, in future projects, I don't think I would take on that many, many roles. Uh, it, it was like, you know, the whole filming process, by the time we were done, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh and now we have to edit for a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So the film had a lot of a lot of very important messages. Just to name a few, uh, don't give up on your dreams. Past does not define who you are today. Most importantly, have fun with things that you are creating every single day. These are just a few of so many and very important messages uh, in the film. Were these messages that you um, thought would be important to have in the film, um, you know, as you were creating it or from the very beginning? Uh, both a, a combination. So like the idea of having that in there and then really fully making the commitment uh, for all of that, you know, while we're doing it. Um, I have given up on projects in the past and in a lot of, there's so many uh, hidden gems out there that haven't been found because people get told, no, they get discouraged. Uh, maybe they don't get funding. So they give up on projects. I know quite a few, f f I can only speak on the filmmaker side, but I'm sure it happens in art, music, any kind of other performance as well. But for, for filmmaking, I know people that have written in amazing scripts have amazing concepts and ideas and that never gets made and it bums me out and it's like why because it didn't fit into what's popular or what the norm is or the safety aspect and i'm tired of that and it's like if if i can be you know a kickstart on others to make whatever the hell they want to make and don't worry about that. Like if you have something beautiful, if you have something for, for, for my project, it's, it's humor, like dysfunctional humor. So 
everyone involved knows you're getting involved with some really wild, humorous, crazy shit. Okay, cool. So then everyone knows that if, if you have a project that's more dark in tone and stuff like that, everyone would understand that. But if you have an amazing idea to do it, and it's really hard to, for a lot of people, especially depending on your, your support systems, where you come from, your upbringing, how much personal, uh, you know, drive you have, it could be tough. Um, and I've seen a lot of good stories not go to waste, but just be put put off to the side. And it's, you know, it's time for us, especially now, striking while the iron's hot, we need to get real stories. They might be raw and gnarly, and some people might not like them. Tough titty, you know, like everything can't be the same always and we have a lot of the project a lot of projects that are along the same lines and period pieces and this and that and those are great projects they should continue to be made awesome but then there's a lot of other people such as myself that want to make something like let's make some let, let's make some hardcore stuff let's make some like rugged raw real stuff absolutely absolutely one of the major story elements in the film is uh, the commentary on lack of indigenous representation in in Hollywood in films like for example you had to go out and make this film yourself uh, in order for it to be seen right uh, you needed to put all hands on deck and make this uh, oh, oh, with that question you know the represent the lack of representation topic and conversation has been happening for a long time mm -hmm. really heavily in the last you know few months or a couple of years that couple there's years. more indigenous content coming out you know you have dark winds and yeah yeah sorry a couple of years. dark winds and reservation dogs and um yeah was, I love uh, reservation dogs. that's a great series these, these awesome yeah 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 and so the the term by us for us but not just by us for us by us for everyone but intended intended for you know who we are and it's important to as an so if there's non-indigenous people so allies right to have to have that goal in mind of the creator if if, if you're an indigenous creator to have other indigenous people or your allies to know that your story is is what the, is the most important the true essence and the truth to it okay. and that could be a beautiful truth or a real ugly nasty truth I, on both ends of the spectrum and that's the ugly nasty truth that's what i like to explore like the raunchy vulgarness the the really sick jokes and the crazy humor and just the the nuttiness of everything that's that that's right up my alley so that's my avenue and then there's there's other stories that could be told too but just just sticking True to authentic. Don't lie. You know, don't be a liar. Um, and that's like in my in my film, if people see the the pretendian thing, that's huge. You know, it's it's uh, it's a big thing. And there's a lot of non-indigenous people that have had indigenous funding and have been called out and all sorts of stuff like that. It's it's wild. And and you know, we've been, we've made up less than two percent of the film industry forever. Less yeah. than two percent. And now it's, you know, those, those horizons are broadening and, and we're, we're able to make our own stuff. And it's been a long time coming, a long time coming. Ever since I was a little kid watching, growing up in this industry, I've seen non-native people make native films. And it's like, oh, okay, well, do you even have like an indigenous consultant or liaison or co-writer or co-director or anything like that? No, like, holy crap. And it's, it's wild because it's not, it's not true. It's not authentic. So the authenticity aspect of it, I think is the most important. Hey, hey Victor opens up in theaters, uh, March 15th. Uh, this gives everyone an opportunity. Go check it out. Cody, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Victor, March 15th, go check it out and support local, local films, local Canadian films. Thank you, Cody. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Appreciate Thank it you so much. Thank you.